Hi, I am Taylor Nordstrom, and for my topic of choice presentation, I chose to do it over gender at work and the gender pay gap. <clears throat> so I thought I would start off with some basics of what I did my research over, um, which was a lot about the gender pay gap and what that looks like now and where we came from um, back before women really were in the workforce at all. So um, the gender pay gap is the average difference between the median salary for men and women. Um, and in 2019, the average is still that women only make 79 cents per every dollar that a man makes. Um, that's just the average. And then women and men that work the exact same job, have the same qualifications, skills, all of that, um, women still make 98 cents to every dollar that a man makes. So that's better, but it's still two cents different. Um, it's not the same for whatever reason. Um, and then women of color face even more barriers than white women do in the U.S. Um, that adds a whole nother realm of um, inequality. So, and then I thought I would take it back to where it all began and where we've come as women in this country. Because um, we know that women have long been thought of as the homemakers and the ones that are supposed to stay home and raise the kids. Um, we weren't even allowed to vote until 1920. And then it wasn't until the civil rights and feminist movements in the 1960s that kind of made women um, more active in the workforce and really fought for their rights there. Um, <clears throat> And even until 1964, they women were able to be fired just for getting married or being pregnant. Um, so thankfully that is no longer a thing. And um, also until the late 1970s, a married woman could not get a driver's license, a credit card, or even a library card unless it was under her husband's name. And again, that's no longer the same. Um, so we've come a long way, but obviously there's still a lot of inequality there. So, um, in addition to the pay gap, there's also what's called or referred to as the opportunity gap. And so that kind of means that women have a much harder time and um, a less success rate at getting promoted to these higher positions, such as like the president of a company or a CEO, um, not because they're not qualified, but because they're women and these positions of power have been held by men for so long. Um, so a very small percentage of women hold these highest titles in um, any company. Um, and like I said, that's referred to as the opportunity gap, which is just related to the pay gap, just the inequality of women in the workforce still. Um, <clears throat> so more statistics that I found in my research is that in 2014, the median annual, annual earnings of women working full-time was just over 39,000 compared to men who were earning just over 50,000 annually. Um, so even when women have the same qualifications, same title as men, they still are earning less. Um, and this isn't just true in the U.S. This has been proven to be true across the country, across the world, um, and other countries too. So it's kind of a universal thing. Um, and one other thing I wanted to touch on that I found in my research was a new metaphor because we most of us have heard of the metaphor the glass ceiling which is a metaphor that represents that invisible barrier that usually like a minority group can't seem to break um, above or rise above and in this case that minority group is women um, hitting that glass ceiling at work and not being able to get promoted to supervisor or higher positions um, and that term was first coined by feminists and the new metaphor that I found in my research was called the glass escalator. And that refers to the advantages that men receive in like women dominant fields. So like nursing and social work and things like that. Um, just includes the assumption that males are better suited for leadership positions within those careers as well. Um, I thought that was interesting. I had never heard that before. Just glass ceiling, not glass escalator. Um, and then I found some different ideas on what can be done to address the issue. And one thing that I found that was interesting is that a large body of evidence has suggested that people don't like to acknowledge that they're victims of injustice. Um, and they just don't want to admit it um, or don't want to like recognize that that's happening to them, um, which is kind of crazy to me, but also I guess kind of makes sense. Um, 
And then there seems to be a general lack of awareness of the gender pay gap. So it really just needs to be recognized that this is a true form of discrimination against women. Um, so that was a little summary of the research that I did over this stuff. So the course objectives that I covered in this, I think, or the four of them, is the first one, <clears throat> which is describe how prejudice, discrimination, and exclusion, while they may appear to benefit limited populations, weaken society as a whole. Um, I mean, I think that not paying women weakens society as a whole. Obviously, like, in a family, if women are trying to support their kids, it's going to be a lot harder for them if they're not making the same amount of money that they should be. Um, <clears throat> And then objective number four, which was analyze historical and contemporary perspectives on selected minorities and cultural groups. Um, I took a look back at where we came from, um, women in history, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, how that kind of changed everything. <clears throat> and then number five, evaluate examples of civic engagement that result in social justice, encouraging social action and embracement of diversity. So I touched on a little bit what I think could be done um, and how women really, they need to step up and not just kind of fall back and no, this is fine. Um, so I think that's important. And then number six was analyze the relevance of diversity to one's career. So um, I think I touched on all of those and I did learn a lot. I found a lot of really interesting statistics that I put in my PowerPoint. Um, about this. I knew that the gender pay gap still existed and I thought that it had decreased a little bit like in the recent years but I don't think that it really has um, and if it has it's only been by like a couple cents. So not much has changed and there's still a lot that can be done in that area. So thank you.